In 1995, Southern Alberta suffered one of its worst natural disasters. Water came within inches of the bottom of the Whoop Up Drive Bridge. The city was actually worried that the bridge would be swept down by the river. It was known as the Flood of the Century. With the onslaught of global warming, floods have become a common occurrence worldwide. What has our own city done to keep things from becoming another, maybe even worse, disaster? I spoke with a few people from the City of Lethbridge administration to find out how the city had prepared for flooding in the Old Man River Basin. I first spoke with Dana Terry, Deputy Fire Chief of Lethbridge. So how did the floods in 2013 differ from the floods in 1995? The difference, well, the primary difference between the two floods was probably the volume of water. Uh, in 1995, the flood volume was, we measure it in cubic meters per second, and the floods in 95 were uh, in excess of 4,000 cubic meters per second, whereas in 2013, they were right around 2,500 feet per, cubic meters per second. So what did the city learn um, from the 1995 floods that helped you guys prepare for the 2013 floods? Uh, probably some of the, the, the biggest concern for the city were the infrastructure that we had in place uh, in the river bottom, specifically the water treatment plant and the sewage treatment plant or the wastewater treatment plant. Uh, do we need to adjust the way we, we preserve that site and protect it, as well as if we need to move water, how do we move water out of there? and uh, the, wa the water treatment plant itself, the, the water level came up close to it, but it was still protected, but it was a concern for us as well. So what kind of measures does the fire department take when a flood is occurring? Uh, so one of the, well, our first priority is always life. We're always concerned about life. And so what we will do is make sure that we have key areas that are in the river bottom that we are concerned about. Uh, first of all is hikers, walkers, people that use the park system, and make sure that they are are asked to leave and so we protect our citizens by making sure that they leave. Um, there's a few different uh, facilities down in the river bottom where we need to make sure people are so the Helen Schuler Cooley Center is down there and so that's one of the places that we'll evacuate and we'll put out public notice that people need to leave. Uh, then we look at uh, Bridgeview Campground uh, which is just on the other side of uh, Highway 3 and that's one of the places that typically will flood in, in yeah that'll be one of the first places that will flood and so we make sure that we will evacuate people out of that location as well we'll have a place for them to go so that they know where to go and they can hook up their trailers and they can leave that premises so how does the city measure those water levels so we utilize uh, the Alberta provincial government has uh, river forecasting or river monitoring uh, sites all along the different uh, waterways and so we will utilize that. Uh, we've actually got an app on our phone, the Alberta Rivers app, and we will actually monitor water levels there and flow, flow levels with that. And that's one of, the, one of the ways that we measure. Additionally, we have uh, watermarks uh, on different, uh, on different uh, bridge, on some of the bridge yeah. abutments. Yep, yeah. and so we will, we will monitor that as well. And so that we'll be able to see where the water peaks, um, how fast it's moving up, how far, and, uh, and even just what's coming down the river as well can give us an example. The water and wastewater treatment plants of the city are located in the Old Man River Basin. So then I spoke with Doug Kaup, the city general manager of water and wastewater. So you had mentioned in our conversation earlier that you were actually here for the floods in 1995. Mm -hmm. What, could you paint a picture of what was happening back then? Well, the, the, the flood of 95, back then we referred to it as the flood of the century. It was, um, uh, it was a lot bigger flood than what we experienced in, in 2013 as far as the staging of the river. The, uh, the, 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 uh, there's a flood protection berm around the water treatment plant uh, that we had, uh, you know, added to uh, with sandbags uh, at, in, in, as the flood uh, came up and the, uh, 
the, the river level actually got within half a meter of, of the top of, of that uh, flood protection berm. So it was, it was a, a good you know, seven or eight meters above the normal water level for the summer. So it was, uh, it was you know, very extreme and, and quite hectic as far as how we responded to it. Okay, so um, when you do know that trouble is coming, what measures does the water treatment plant take? So we have, we have a very detailed response plan for, um, for flood situations at, at both the water and the wastewater treatment plant. The uh, key concerns at the water plant are, are the, the drains from the plant uh, that go back into the river. So our normal operations would have, would have, uh, like filter wash water, and and other uh, waste streams that that would naturally just discharge into the into the river. Yeah. And there's also, you know, overflow systems that where we have tanks, uh, you know, a, a large tank below the plant that we call the clear well that stores uh, treated water for pump to pump from, it has an overflow to the river in case of an emergency, emergency overflow. So in, in the, the worst case scenario, and, and you know, there, there was some risk you know, with the high waters in 1995, that, that the river would back up into the plant through those wow. systems and, and potentially contaminate water that was already treated. So, so some of the procedures they do are uh, that they, you know, the action that they take is to isolate those those drains and to prevent river water from from getting into the treatment plant where it's not wanted. And finally, I spoke with Chris Spearman, the mayor of Lethbridge, to get his insights. What decisions do you have to make as mayor? Uh, when flooding occurs? What I do is I go down to the emergency, co emergency coordination center. So uh, usually the fire chief or somebody uh, at the fire hall will activate that when there's an imminent emergency. A signal goes out to all of us on our cell phones and we have to respond, say that we're on the way. So th about a dozen people come, uh, key people in infrastructure come, key people in communications, uh, the city manager usually comes, the fire chief will be there and the deputy fire chief and we'll have people from Alberta Health Services depending on the nature of the emergency. So when there's flooding, there is a risk of water contamination. So we would have to have Alberta Health Services there in case we have to have a, a boil water order. So what are your top three main concerns when it comes to flooding? The most important thing is to inform the public and to make sure that they don't put themselves at risk, that they don't interfere with the uh, operations that are taking place to address specific issues. So uh, usually have curiosity in the public and people uh, can sometimes impede people trying to prevent damage and uh, so uh, that's a challenge. And then uh, to maintain uh, the accuracy of the information going out to the community. Uh, with social media it can sometimes get complicated where you have people who aren't well informed uh, providing information to the public and so it's important to make sure the information we provide to the mainstream media and the information on our social media websites is consistent so that the public's getting uh, consistent in information about possible risks to their safety and uh, any other health issues. So to prevent flood damages, what sorts of infrastructure does the city put in place? Well, the two uh, most significant pieces of infrastructure, in addition to the bridges, are the water treatment plant and the wastewater treatment plant. So what we've done is we've built large berms uh, around those uh, facilities to make sure that water doesn't come in and uh, there isn't uh, contamination in the river or cam contamination of the city's water supply. Great, and that's about all the questions I have for you. So thank you so much for joining us. It's been my pleasure, Katie.